Very good evening, all of you. And uh, tonight we have a special talk on the mindfulness for fighting peace in a frantic world. And our speaker this evening is Dr. Yo Ka King. Now, as we know, mindfulness is one of the factors of the Noble Eightfold Path taught by the Buddha. And this Eightfold Path provides a method for spiritual growth and transformation. In the language of the sutras or the discourses by the Buddha, it says that this would lead to overcoming of sorrow and misery and for the destruction of pain and grief. In other words, the cultivation of mindfulness and uh, meditation is aimed at nothing less than final liberation from suffering or the attainment of Nibbana, which is, of course, the highest goal of the Buddhist teachings. But mindfulness is not just for the achievement of the highest goal. There are many general applications of mindfulness, and this will bring tremendous benefit to people regardless of ethnicity and religious affi uh, affiliations in, in their normal life activities. There is a universal quality about the practice of mindfulness, which is the reason why it is widely accepted in the West. Now, the angle adopted by the Westerners to mindfulness is not from the spiritual or religious angle, not from spiritual or religious practice for the sake of attaining Nibbana, but for the practical and the wide-ranging benefits that it brings to the practitioners. Mindfulness has been used for, uh, for bringing a balance of mind, generate peace and calmness, overcome stress, improves scholastic achievements, bring about emotional intelligence, greater work product productivity, leadership acumen, and so on. And these benefits have actually been validated and supported by extensive scientific research done in top universities. It is from this practical angle that mindfulness has found its way into schools, into the training of athletes, as well as the House of Parliament. There is no denying that the world we live in is becoming more complicated and frantic. And this occurs in many dimensions, at a personal level, the enterprise and business level, societal level, as well as the geopolitical level. Now, how can we use mindfulness as a technique and strategy to cope better in life amidst all these challenges? so that we become a steady rock in a stormy ocean. Our speaker this evening is very qualified to speak on mindfulness as a tool for finding peace in a frantic world. Uh, he is Dr. Yoka King. He is a fully certified teacher for Search Inside Yourself curriculum for developing mindfulness and emotional intelligence that was developed and tested at Google in the United States. Now, I do not know how many of you have heard of the SIY program, Search Inside, Your, uh, Search Inside Yourself program. It was actually developed by Brother Tan Chak Ming, who um, came from uh, Singapore, but uh, he worked in Google. And Google has always allowed this stuff, uh, some amount of their time, they could spend developing certain things that they like. And Brother Tan Chak Ming developed this Search Inside Yourself, which is making use of mindfulness, and to be applied into the business environment. And this program has been uh, tremendously successful. And I must say something special about uh, Dr. Yo, because uh, Dr. Yo uh, and I met up with Brother Tan Chak Ming in Singapore when Tan Chak Ming came over to Singapore. And over the lunch table, uh, the discussion between uh, Dr. Yo and Tan Chak Ming has obviously impressed uh, Dr. Tan Chak Ming. Uh, they, uh, uh, that impressed uh, Brother Tan Chak Ming, that he offered a scholarship uh, to, to Dr. Yeo, to Ka King. So uh, he was offered a scholarship right across the table. And uh, Chak Ming's father actually sponsored, also offered to, uh, to fly uh, Brother Ka King over to uh, San Francisco. So, and he is actually the first certified teacher for Search Inside Yourself uh, program. And to date, uh, Dr. Yeo has uh, conducted over a hundred mindfulness uh, workshops to various audience 
uh, ranging from global technology companies to investment firms to hospitals and humanitarian uh, organizations. In Asia itself, he's one of the pioneers in introducing mindfulness training to corporate organizations, and this include Intel, Dell, Huawei, TSMC, Deloitte, Mercedes-Benz, Infineon, and Vitrox, and so on. Uh, Dr. Yeo is a founding chairman of Malaysia Mindfulness Association, and he has frequently been featured in the local mass media. I think also very popular in the Chinese media as well. He obtained a doctorate degree, not in mindfulness, but in organic chemistry at a very prestigious Oxford University, and is currently a senior lecturer in the School of Chemical Sciences at University of Science Malaysia. So with that as an introduction, let us welcome Dr. Yoka King to uh, give us a talk on this topic. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sri, Dr. Victor V, for the very kind introduction. And uh, good evening, everyone. Although I can't see you, but I believe uh, we have audience from different parts of Malaysia and maybe from different countries as well. So it's my great pleasure and honor to be able to be here tonight at my house in Penang to share with you some thoughts on mindfulness and how to apply mindfulness as a tool to cope with the challenges that we have in this uh, frantic world. So uh, at first, I would like to uh, put on my slide. Uh, okay, wait, let me share the screen first. Okay, can you see uh, the screen? I believe uh, you can, isn't it? Uh, okay, let's uh, start uh, with uh, a little bit of introduction of myself. Although uh, Dr. Sri have kindly introduced myself, but I just like to talk a little bit of my background uh, on uh, mindfulness. I started to learn about mindfulness about more than 20 years ago when I was a university student, uh, second year uh, in my university. And uh, that is from the Buddhist perspective. I went to many, many meditation retreats uh, and then uh, learned from different uh, meditation teachers. Uh, most of them are monks. And then after that, I received a scholarship to do my PhD at Oxford University. That was my first encounter to what we call contemporary mindfulness, modern mindfulness. At Oxford University itself, there is an Oxford Mindfulness Center. In fact, tonight's uh, talk, the title, I got the inspiration from this book, written by Professor Mark Williams and Danny Payman. The book is called A Mindfulness, A Practical Way, A Practical Guide to Finding Peace in a Frantic World. And this is Professor Mark Williams. He is the professor in the uh, Department of Psychology at uh, Oxford University and also the former directors of uh, Oxford Mindfulness Centre. I attended their eight weeks program on uh, mindfulness-based uh, connective therapy. We call it MBCT. It's a very popular program in the West, especially uh, for the purpose of uh, prevention of recurrent depression. There is a purpose why uh, MBCT was developed at the first place. Of course, MBCT uh, was not the first uh, secular mindfulness program. Uh, the first one will be like uh, MBSR, Mindfulness-Based uh, Stress Reduction, developed by uh, Dr. John kabat at the University of Massachusetts uh, at the Stress Reduction Clinic. That, that was uh, back to uh, 1979. So MBSR... Um and uh, MBCT. Okay. Okay. Yes. You just hold on yes. for a while. We cannot see your screen, you know. Are you sharing? Oh, you cannot from? see my screen. We cannot see. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank, yes. thank you for letting me know. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe I should. Uh, can you see it now, Dr. Sarik? Oh, yes. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Please let me know. Uh, can you see the screen now? Yes. I can, I can see. I can see something there. Professor uh, Mark Williams for Oxford. 
Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that's that's, uh, that's good. good. Thank you. That's Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. Eh? So, uh, yeah, you can interrupt me, please, Dr. Sri, because what I can see is only my screen. <laughs> I cannot even see <laughs> anyone. <laughs> I'm like, computer. <laughs> I have to practice like speaking to the screen. <laughs> this is a little bit different from like actual, uh, what we call talk that we have face to face talk. I think this is also one of the modern day's challenge that we have to speak to the screen. <laughs> okay, let me continue. Uh, okay, this is uh, Professor Mark William uh, from Oxford Mindfulness Center. And uh, when I was at Oxford that time doing my uh, PhD, sorry, 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 I, I, cooking. Uh, yeah, just hold on for a while. I think the screen is still not 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 shared. According oh, really? to uh, what we had was just a comment. Can you try again sharing your screen? Okay, let me try again. Let me try again. Let me Isn't try this again. Uh, the right one? No, your screen uh, is it but, like a PowerPoint? Uh, let's see. Uh, let me see. Maybe. Uh, oh, I, I remember. Uh, okay, okay. I have to press the share screen. I think I didn't press the share screen. Okay, one more time. Uh, cancer. Because I'm not so used to this. Uh, stream yard. Oh, uh, stream yard. But I cannot share my screen. Even I, uh, I cannot press as well. Sharing a screen. Okay, let's see. Cancer. One more time. Okay, let me cancel. I should press the share screen. Is it? But I cannot share the screen because the button is not uh, activated. I think what we can do is maybe, uh, Brother Alex, you do have my slide, isn't it? If you could, maybe you uh, share the screen uh, so that everyone can see. Oh. Okay. Uh, Alex, or yes. now everyone can see the screen or not? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. One more time. One more time. I try, or maybe I, I try one more time to share the screen. Okay. Uh, but definitely I cannot share the screen here because the button is deactivated. Okay. Your entire screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's see. One more time. Maybe this time is okay already. Ah, I think this time it works. Isn't it? Uh, can you see? Or maybe Alex, can you see the screen? We I think so. Done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, yeah, great. Now I can yeah. see already. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Sorry for the technical, uh, what we call issue, but but just now everyone can hear me, isn't it? The only thing that they couldn't see the screen, but now you can see the screen. Okay. Let me continue. Okay. So this is, uh, as I said, uh, I my first encounter with contemporary mindfulness was at the Oxford Mindfulness Center. Okay, I attended an eight-week program, and after I returned to Malaysia, I thought this is really good, you know, to share mindfulness in a more, uh, in a secular way, uh, and also more systematic and link it with science and psychology. Therefore, after I returned uh, from uh, from UK and worked at USM, I started a, a project called Mindful as a Jatra. Okay, sharing with the lecturers and students on mindfulness. So this is Professor Mark William, as you can see. He is one of the pioneers who bring who brought mindfulness into the parliament and they started a project called a Mindful Initiative and published a report called a Mindful Nation UK report. You can really see mindfulness is really a big, big thing now in the West, especially like in the UK. They are studying on introducing mindfulness into uh, mainstream medicine and psychology. This is one area. Second will be the corporate sector. And the third one will be uh, school, education. And the last one is in the prison, okay? So if you are interested, you can download this uh, Mindful Nation UK report for free. So this is a Search Inside Yourself uh, program or the book written by Meng, uh, mentioned by Dr. Sri just now. This picture actually was taken at a uh, Google campus. Uh, Ming has now retired from Google. So if you're interested, you know, you can look up for the book. And uh, I would like to share a little bit on this uh, Search Inside Yourself program or SIY because I'm a certified teacher of uh, teaching this program. There are three main components in SIY. Uh, the first one, of course, is mindfulness. Mindfulness is used as a tool to develop emotional intelligence. 
when we're talking about emotional intelligence, we are talking about five aspects of emotional intelligence. The first one is a self-awareness. Second is self-management or emotional management. The third aspect is uh, motivation and then empathy and social skill. So in SIY, we blended all these uh, five uh, emotional intelligence competency to develop or what we call to enable leadership. Re leadership is about how you are going to create a positive impact on the people around you. Okay. Uh, so, and also this program is uh, science-based or evidence-based supported by uh, neuroscience. Uh, in the program, we will share, you know, how by the training of mindfulness, you can actually develop the functions of your mind, like how to pay attention and also like uh, how to reduce stress and the better emotional management. So this can be measured as a function and also uh, measured in the changes of the structures of the brain or uh, is more specifically to the cortical thickness of the brain. For example, one of the function of the prefrontal cortex that is for attention regulation or to pay attention. So if you practice mindfulness for a certain period of time, under the fMRI machine, the scientist is able to measure, of course, it's like not the millimeter, millimeters or even smaller than that unit, that you can see the, that part of the brain, prefrontal cortex has developed in terms of like mental muscle or the brain muscle. So this is what we call neuroplasticity. Okay, so this is a bit uh, some background on how or why mindfulness has been so well accepted by the West, okay? Because it's mainly, you know, supported by empirical research. Of course, it's still at a very early stage, but uh, this uh, will give a lot of confidence uh, to people around. And as you can see, the logo here, it shows that the corporate organization that embrace uh, mindful, what we call mindfulness training. Of course, just now we have mentioned Google. Uh, Google is not alone. We have SAP and we have even Intel. Intel have uh, what we call a wait at Intel program, which is mindfulness-based program to uh, develop or to improve uh, the wellness or emotional intelligence competencies or leadership skill. Okay. And then uh, this is a training I conducted at uh, Huawei. In fact, I went to a uh, number of Huawei Research Center in China uh, to offer the SIY program. And then this is in Malaysia, Dell. Uh, these are the top management of Dell. And then lastly, uh, this is in Hong Kong, English School Foundation. Just want to give a little bit background to those who are not so familiar with the what we call the modern development and also application of mindfulness in the modern world. Okay, now let's come back to our main uh, topic today. You know? uh, what are actually our challenges in this modern world? Or you can say the frantic world. Especially at this time, the world is facing with uh, what we call COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, the economy has been badly affected you know, by uh, this pandemic. And uh, uh, a lot of people also facing with uh, emotional issue and how we are going to cope with that. Let's talk about the three major challenges first. You know, what are the challenges like facing by the people in the modern world? The first one is stress, okay? <laughs> a lot of people are working adults, you know, whether the stress could be come from your work and also could we come from a, a, like a family, health issue and family. A lot of people are having, you know, problem to coping with the stress. And we do not have a important skill to work with stress. Although we have studied a lot, different subject in the school, like myself as an educator, you know, study until PhD and now work in the university. I think we Average, averagely, people spend about 10 to 20 years in the school. But we have not been taught on how to work with our emotion and stress. Okay, So stress is one of the major issues or one of the major challenges facing by us. 
The second will be emotions. I always like to tell this story. You know, this this guy, his name is Ke Jie. Okay, is uh, this gold or chess champion champions of uh, in in China? Uh, years ago, there was a competition between uh, this Ke Jie with the uh, AI technology developed by Google called AlphaGo. Try to think about it before the actual uh, tournament. You do you think that uh, Ke Jie uh, he could sleep very well, or AlphaGo could sleep better? <laughs> Okay, just kidding. And you can see that AI technology or robot have no emotion. But as a human being, we have emotions. And emotion will also affect our performance, our mental focus, and so on. At the end, of course, uh, Ke Jie lost uh, this uh, tournament. But you can think about it, you know, before the games or after the game, how is he going to cope with this emotion? If emotion has not been managed very well, you know, it will actually create uh, more issue as well, including stress. So emotional management is also one of the greatest challenges that we have in the modern world. And we have not been taught on how to work with our emotion. So the third challenges that we have is uh, what we call like People now have very short attention span. And uh, Harvard scientists have shown that we spend about half of our average time in mind wandering, which means if we are trying to read a book or trying to do something, half of the time we are not, we are not able to pay full attention into what we do. Okay, The mind keep on wandering. So this is really one of the greatest challenges that we have. Now everybody have one, a mobile phone, you now have to reply to email, WeChat, WhatsApp message, so many things. And we have YouTube videos. These are the modern technology eh, that we have to work with. But the end result is, you know, our attention span have become shorter and shorter. And the same researcher, uh, same group of researcher, also show that, you know, what they found is uh, a wandering mind is not a happy mind. If you are not able to stay focused, okay, our mind is keep on wandering, which means it will also affect your, uh, what we call mental well-being. Okay, and we are not alone because the scientists uh, share with us there is a network in our brain called the, called the default mode network or DMN. Sometimes it's called the brain dark energy. This network is always active even at our resting uh, state. Okay, When you're trying to rest and do nothing but your brain is still very active. You, your attention is always sometimes it's in the past, sometimes it's in the future. Especially when you have to cope with some challenges like giving an uh, important presentation or sitting for exam or even getting married. These are the important what we call event in our life and our mind can't stop you know thinking about it and start to worry about it. You know? So this is also uh, at that time the default mode network is especially active. So which means if we do not try to do anything, our mind is always always at this state. You know, past and futures. Attention is in the past or future. Sometimes it's uh, distracted. Or you can say it's quite restless. There is only very little moment that we experience peace. Because as mentioned before, a wandering mind is an unhappy mind. Which means this is a norm. Huh? Maybe we can call it a new norm. <laughs> like COVID-19, new norm Okay, that we have to adapt. So, this is like a stream, like we are following the stream. Or uh, even in thermodynamic, I'm teaching organic chemistry. Eh? There's one uh, topic is on thermodynamic. We call it entropy, delta S. Entropy means things in the universe tend to go to a state of disorder. So, that is also the same with our mind. If we do not do anything, okay, so that will be at the state, you know, mind wandering, distraction, 
thinking about past and future. So this is the challenges that we have. Uh, actually, not the modern life challenges. I believe even in the Buddha time, 2,500 years ago, okay, uh, the mental state is also similar. Therefore, the Buddha said, you know, dukkha, okay, unsatisfactoriness is no satisfaction. If you do not develop our mind, that is the state, you know, especially when we have to cope or face with challenges. So, what do we need to do? What we need to do is actually go against the current. Okay? So, when we say go against the current, which means we want to develop an inner strength or an ability how to bring our attention from the past and future to the present moment. How to actually shift our mind from a distracted state to a more focused state, from restless to peace. Okay, so which means something has to be done. Okay, so uh, and therefore because this is go against the the current, which means we have to develop the strength or the inner power. So in this day, mindfulness has been called. A superpower okay because it could help if we train in mindfulness and we know you know uh, uh, how to train ourselves in terms of uh, mental focus and how to work with our emotion then mindfulness could become one of our inner strength and superpower so you may wonder uh, what actually is mindfulness let's uh, uh, of course, as we said, what we can do, how? Uh, the thing is, uh, what we want to do is to uh, switch from autopilot to aware. Just now, what we mentioned, attention is in the past or future. There is almost like an autopilot, an op autopilot state. Okay? What we want to do is to switch from autopilot to aware. And how we are going to do that? Okay? And that is true, what we call... Uh, Mindfulness. So, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness, even the English term, is relatively new. It was used to translate the uh, words, uh, Pali words called sati. Okay. So when the when the what we call the uh, translator trying to translate sati, at the time they used the English word called mindfulness. Be mindful, of course, mindful or be mindful has been there for a long time, but not the now mindfulness. Mindfulness, I think, was used is in early 80s or 90s for the translation of sati okay, by the scholar. So when we say be mindful, sometimes when we went, get off of the train, you will see the what we call uh, the sign telling you be mindful. So what is be mindful? Be mindful means to be more careful, isn't it? When we need to be more careful or pay more attention. Uh, so that is the meaning, one of the meanings of mindfulness. But by looking at this word, the Chinese characters of sati or mindfulness, this word is pronounced nian uh, in Chinese. It's very meaningful word because nian actually in Chinese means to remember or to bear in mind. If you read Chinese or understand Chinese, sometimes we, we use the words called uh, uh, xiang nian. When we say we xiang nian, means we miss someone, which means you cannot forget this person. So nian, the original meanings of sati or mindfulness actually means to remember. To remember, for uh, to do what? To remember to pay attention to the present moment. Okay? So as also the this nian, this word reflect, this is one character, mean present moment or now. This character is pronounced jing or you can say like now or today. Okay? And the second character at the bottom mean sing. Sing actually mean awareness. Okay? So when put them together, it become Present moment awareness. Present moment awareness means the opposite will be absent-minded. Okay, so the opposite of absent-minded is 
present moment awareness or you can say it maybe you can call it present mindedness present a uh, present moment awareness and to be able to remember or to recall he has a very close connection for example when you go home you know after you uh, go back uh, from your work and go home and you simply drop or put your handphone somewhere but at the time when you place your handphone that time your mind is not at the present moment okay your your mind you are absent minded that time so after that you will not be able to recall where you have actually put your mobile phone so you can see the connection or not so to be able to remember or to recall uh, one of the condition is your mind must be able to be present at that time so as you can see this quality of to be able to remember or to recall or to be pay attention at the present moment is a universal quality and you can say you, we can also say that there is a universal function of the mind or the brain let's take for example you know for example now you are listening to me now if you do not pay attention your mind is not here your mind start to wonder you will not be able to remember what i said later you will not be able to recall what you hear isn't it so paying attention and the ability to recall is uh, what we call the function of mindfulness giving this example mindfulness will be a universal quality regardless of your religious background or your ethnic background isn't it because everybody have to train themselves to be present you know at the uh, present moment so that we are able to recall what we learn later okay so as you can see mindfulness have no uh, so called religions uh, religious color in that okay this is the so called the general definition of mindfulness later i'm going to give a more specific definition of mindfulness especially to be used as a tools okay so more specifically when we define mindfulness as a what we call a technique to train our mind this will fit better with the second definition just now we have mentioned that mindfulness been present moment awareness or paying attention to the present moment of course we have the specific object to pay attention in this training we pay attention to our body to pay attention to our mind what happens in our mind including the feelings thoughts and emotion and also the surrounding surrounding will be including other people when you talk to someone whether your mind is fully present or not when you are having this conversation if not you know you were not able to pay attention to what people are trying to share with you so that will be in this aspect mindfulness has a what we call a is a trainable technique or practice or skill that will be enable us to bring our attention back to the present moment okay so that for example true pay attention to your breath or to pay attention to your body as a object of attention okay so this is the one of the very important uh, factors or component in mindfulness the second component of uh, mindfulness is called the attitude attitude will be how to pay attention for example eh, if your mind start to wander when you try to pay attention to your breath when you try to meditate of course your mind will start to wander okay many time when the mind started to wander we start to judge ourselves try to be we start to be very critical about ourselves so we say oh why this happen you know why i cannot control my mind why my mind is so restless uh, that is our reaction is it so in term of attitude this is very important component so when you pay attention to your uh, state of body or mind and how you are going to respond to it especially when your mind 
start to wonder or when you experience certain what we call a painful sensation in your body or certain emotion that will be on how you are going to pay attention to this body and mind state okay so in mindfulness we call we are going to develop this right attitude we pay attention to what is happening at the present moment in our mind body okay with a kind of uh, uh what we call with kind attention or sometimes we call it with kindness and curiosity this will be on how you are going to relate you know with your emotions okay so in simple in summary we can say that mindfulness means paying attention to what is happening in the present moment in the mind body and the external environment with an attitude of curiosity and kindness and this is the definition given by mindful nation uk report so when we're talking about mindfulness as a what we call a therapy or a training it must uh, consist of these two major component one is attention training one is we train ourselves on how to respond you know to our uh, present moment uh, body and mind state okay so this will be the uh, more uh, complete understanding on uh, mindfulness so let's do some practice okay let me check what is the time now how how much time do we have okay is this is almost uh, uh, 35 minutes i think we still have time so let's try some practice okay i'm going to uh, share with you uh, some simple mindfulness practice after we have uh, briefly understand what mindfulness is so now i'm going to share with you some technique on how to develop this ability to pay attention at the present moment okay and also to pay attention to our emotions and thoughts so basically when we when we say mindfulness is an attention training what do that what do we mean by that first is what is attention when we say pay attention for example you may pay attention to my hand here okay so when we say pay attention you are directing your attention or your mind to a certain object or to a certain direction this is what we mean by paying attention okay so second ability that we want to train in mindfulness is what we call a meta attention what is meta attention meta attention is the attention of attention which mean the ability to know that your mind has wandered so so in mindfulness we do not afraid that the mind wanders because my wandering is is what we call is a you can say that uh, it's a norm okay because we have also mentioned default mode network is always very active if you do not train the brain okay, do not train our mind the what we call the norm or the default state is like going uh, is my wandering okay so what we need to therefore we need to train to bring the mind back to the present moment again and again so at first when we start to practice mindfulness we are bringing our attention or direct our attention to a certain object the object will include body and mind but body is always uh, easier to start with okay because the body is always at the present moment so later in the practice i'm going to guide you on how to develop what we call the body awareness and breath awareness using our body and or and breath as an anchor for our mind to come back to the present moment okay this also bring us to this uh, another technique that i always like to share with my student is called the anchor of now when we say anchor of now we bring our attention to our soul okay to our malaysia tapakaki you know you feel your soul or feel your feet 
you know, placing on the ground. You feel the, the touching sensation and feel the, uh, what we call the weight of your body. Okay. So this is one very important method because whenever you go, okay, for example, when we walked, if you pay attention to our soul or to our feet, our mind immediately come back to the present moment. And also when you sit, you see, when we sit and then we bring our attention to our soul and right, right there, our mind will be at the present moment. Similarly, when we stand, okay, when we stand, we also pay attention to our soul and then our attention be right back there. Okay, so this is one of the very important tips, you know, for people to develop the ability to come back to the present moment. Therefore, I call it anchor of now. You will anchor our mind at the present moment. So later, I'm going to uh, guide you on that as well. And the second one, as I said, is the body awareness. We can always use our body as an anchor of now as well, because our body is ever present. The only thing that wonders is the mind, isn't it? So when we pay attention to our body, our mind is right back. Okay. So after some time, when you pay attention to your body or to your breath, you start to forget. Okay. Therefore, your mind start to get uh, become mindless. Okay. Uh, forget forgetfulness. When we forget our body or forget our breath, our mind is not right there, isn't it? So when the mind wanders, we aware of that. We aware of that. That will be called a meta attention. So this will be the first step of the mindfulness training. Okay, by paying attention to our body and also to paying attention to the breath. So now I'm going to combine this method and going to guide you on the simple mindfulness practice on mindfulness of the body and breath. Okay, if you are in a safe environment, you know, at home, or you are not driving. So please, you know, follow me huh, with this practice. So the first step, you may place your hands on your on your laps. Okay, this is a, and then you may slowly close your eyes and bring your attention back to this body. First step, be aware of your sitting posture. How your body is positioned when you sit. Have a feeling of your whole body sitting here. Be aware of different touching sensation, including the anchor of now, your soul or your feet come into contact with the ground or with the floor. Just bring your attention there. Feel your both soles. Right soul, left soul. Feel the touching sensation. And then slowly switch your attention to your buttock. Be aware of your buttock. Come into contact with the chair that you are sitting. Be aware of the touching sensation. And be aware of the weight of a body. Your whole body. As I mentioned, as well as the touching sensation. You may feel soft or hard. You may pay attention to this sensation.
And then next, bring your attention to your upper body. Feel your chest, your shoulders, your upper back, your lower back. and also to your abdomen. Have a sense of your whole body sitting here. You may also pay attention to the different touching sensation. Including the clothes that you are wearing come into contact with your skin like covering your whole upper body not to imagine or visualize but to feel it pay your attention there You may extend your attention to feel your limbs, your hands, your palms, and your fingers. Be aware of your touching sensation when the palm comes into contact with your laps. Where of your weight of your both hand and when your hand come into contact with the air in the surrounding the temperature or the windy sensation Okay, then have a sense of your whole body, including your upper body, your both hands, your butt top, your both legs, your soul, sitting here. And then, slowly, extend your attention to your neck. Feel the tightness or some pressure sensation there. Then bring your attention to your face. Your facial skin come into contact with the air in the surrounding. The warmness or the coldness on the surface of your skin. Your lips are touching each other. Your eyes lips are touching each other. Feel the sensation. And then bring your attention to your both ears. Feel the temperatures on your both ears warmness or coldness. Then bring attention to the crown of our head. 
or your whole head. And then now you may feel your whole body from the crown of your head slowly move down to your forehead to your both eyes to your ears lips facial skin neck, shoulders, chest, abdomen, upper back and lower back, your buttock, your both legs, your both hands, your soul. Now have a sense of the whole body sitting here. What we need to do is to remember to pay attention to our body. Okay. You may now ask yourself a question. Am I taking an in-breath now or am I taking an out-breath now? Be curious, bring your attention to feel the process of breathing, natural breathing. You do not need to control anything. What you need to do is just be curious and pay attention to the breath or the process of breathing. If you can't feel the breath, that is okay. You just have to pay attention to the whole body. If you can feel the breath, that is also very good. We should pay more attention to the breath. At the same time, having the body awareness in the background. You may start to notice your mind start to think about the past and future. That is normal. Just be aware, gently bring it back to the breath or to the body. Okay, now having a sense of the whole body sitting here again. Feel your whole body. And you may start to pay attention to the sound in the surrounding. 
any sound. Just expand your awareness field to beyond your body. And then you may slowly open your eyes. When you open your eyes, be aware of what you see in front of you. The color and the shape. Okay? You may, you may slowly move your body. Or you put your palm together. Okay? Put your palm together. Feel the touching sensation of your both hands. You may feel the softness or the warmness of your hand. And that is the feeling that we pay attention to. It's not any extraordinary uh, experience. It's a very common experience. What we need to do is to bring our attention back and to be aware of this ordinary experience. Okay? Then you may start to rub your hand. Make it warm. Rub your hand. Make your hand warm and then cup your hand on your face. Feel the warmness of your hand slowly transfer to your body, uh, to your face. And then you may give yourself a massage on your forehead, your tempers, and then Washing your face, like in the morning when we wash our face, but now without water. Okay, just like, rub it. And then pulling your ears up and down. Pulling your ears up and down. And then give yourself a little bit of massage on your shoulders. Okay. Okay, how do you feel? You no, know, I'm not sure for how many of you that it's the first time you ever sitting for so long. No paying attention to body and breath. So this is a very simple and also a short practice that we do, maybe over 10 minutes. Okay, for some people it may feel that quite short. For some someone may feel that it's too long because your mind, you know, always wandered and you know a lot of uh, maybe feelings and emotions start to pop up. That is also uh, very natural. Okay, what we need to do is. Pay attention to this feeling or thought and aware that our mind has been dragged to that direction. O aware of it and then coming back again to your body or to your breath. Later, later maybe at the end of the session, you know, someone may share your experience or maybe you have some question you may ask later. Okay, so this is will be like anchor of now and then uh, body awareness. And also breath awareness. I combine them together. Okay, because in mindfulness practice, what is important is not what you pay attention to, is the quality of your attention. Okay, whether you are fully aware or not. You can pay attention to your breath, you can pay attention to your body, okay, or when your mind started to wander, you aware, you know, there is some thoughts or feelings arises. Okay, after pay attention to them uh, uh, with kindness and then slowly you return back to your body or to your breath. For beginners, this is a very good way to start with. Okay, because if you immediately pay attention to your thoughts or emotion, sometimes it could be quite tricky because this our attention is our thoughts is always about the past and future. We may just follow the trend of thought without being fully aware of it. So we need to have an object or anchor. You know, normally we start with physical object. Okay, start with body. As I explained, because the body is always here and now. So that we have a home to come back. Okay, we know that when we pay attention to our body, pay attention to our breath, our mind, come back to the present moment. Of course, there are many other object as well, including the sound, you know, the sight, what you see, what you smell, you know, the touching sensation and the taste. But that will be like uh, a more advanced practice already. Okay, maybe share with you next time. So at home, I strongly encourage you to at least spend about 
three minutes per day. If you don't have time, three minutes, it could be the shorter time, shortest time you you uh, uh, you may use to practice mindfulness. Sometimes even one minute. Ming, Ming said, you know, one breath, that is the shortest time. But I would recommend at least, you know, every day you give yourself three minutes. I call it three mindful uh, space, you know, for yourself to be alone and pay attention to your body and mind at the present moment. So the first minute or the first step you may spend on feeling your body, you know, pay attention to your body. After that, you can switch your attention to your breath and then coming back to the body again. Okay, so and you can, if you have longer time, you know, you can do each one for five minutes, then it total up will be 15 minutes. This is just a very basic, you know, and a good way to start. Okay, so one of the techniques uh, that I would like to share with you uh, uh, for tonight. And then, you know, later you may share, you know, how do you feel uh, with me? And in mindfulness practice, I still have some time, you know, we can uh, uh, divide it to two ways. One is called a uh, dedicated practice. It's like we are going to the gym, you know, uh, every day or every week. We allocate some time or we dedicate ourselves like each day or every day, five to ten minutes for the sitting practice, sitting meditation. Okay. And the other types of practice or the other way that we can practice mindfulness is what we call integrated practice. Okay. That will be a sh shorter practice. Like every time before the meeting, you spend about one minute to fully arrive at the meeting. Okay. So like pay attention to your body or to your breath. Okay. And also integrated practice, including mindfulness in the daily life. Okay. So when we know, when we learn about the techniques, very important at the beginning is techniques matters. Okay. We need to know how to actually practice mindfulness. So there are many ways. For example, we brush our teeth every day. We can use that activity as a mindfulness activity. You know, when we wake up, we are fully aware of our body and the state of mind. And then we, we uh, stand up. The whole process, we are aware of the whole body. You know, when the body moves, your mind or your attention is with the body. And then you go to the toilet, you stand there, and then you start to brush your teeth. Okay, every moment you pay attention to your physical activity. We use the body as an anchor so that we can come back to the present moment. When we pay attention to our body, we can avoid paying attention to our mind as well because there are, there are always thoughts and sometimes feelings. Okay, so these are the secondary object that we can pay attention to. Eh? Because as we see in mindfulness, we train ourselves to pay attention to our body, mind, and also the surrounding. How does the surrounding having an impact on our emotional state? Okay, so these are the way that we can practice uh, mindfulness. We call it living mindfully. Okay, when we eat something, when you drink something, you know, uh, you can also pay attention. Of course, the best thing is. You attend a course, a workshop, or learn from uh, an, an experienced teachers so that you know the various way of uh, practicing mindfulness. So, and also you can practice mindfulness at the workplace. You know, as I said, mindful meeting, mindful communication, mindful listening when you listen to someone, even uh, mindful driving your car, okay? mindful uh, replying email. There are many ways. You know, these are the techniques or tools that we can apply uh, uh, how to integrate uh, mindfulness in our daily life. And this is uh, the Facebook of our Malaysia Mindfulness Association. You, know, you can like our page. Uh, sometimes we do share some useful information you know, on uh, mindfulness. And then lastly, I hope uh, through this uh, one hour uh, sharing, uh, we have some ideas on what is mindfulness and how to practice mindfulness. If we develop it every day, you know, like develop and uh, going to the gym to, to build our muscle, if we develop mindfulness over time, 
then you can really see there is an improvement in your brain function. For example, how to pay attention, how to pay attention, and how to cope with uh, emotions. Okay, and so mindfulness is like a a very strong. Uh, uh, just now, Dr. Sri said it's a rock. Okay, it will be a pole as well. Okay, in this turbulence time or in this frantic world, we develop an inner strength or a home for us to come back. Okay, so that we can always return to the present moment and be present to whatever things that we do. Okay, so this is a uh, very sh and then hopefully by the practice of mindfulness we will be able to experience a more uh, what we call calmer, clearer, you know, and uh, uh, and peaceful mind as well. So this is this for the benefits of in in our daily life or, or we call it the modern life. Of course, mindfulness can bring us much more deeper or uh, to a higher goal, you know, like uh, of a spiritual goal to achieve the total enlightenment or to the end of the suffering. Of course, in terms of the practice, they are uh, a little bit different and also there are a lot of similarity as well. So by this, I end uh, uh, today uh, sharing on this uh, topic of mindfulness. I hope uh, you enjoyed the talk and uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Okay, so I think now I will start, stop uh, sharing the screen and then I pass the uh, my over to Dr. Sri. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Yeo, thank you so much for your wonderful talk. Is uh, uh, You were talking about contemporary mindfulness, uh, and this has to be distinguished from people practicing mindfulness and meditation as a way of spiritual evolution. Obviously, in the Buddhist path, uh, that also becomes really important because ultimately we are aiming to get enlightenment. And how uh, that... Uh, Mindfulness has now been uh, taken to West by storm uh, because of the uh, beneficial uh, uh, effects that it brings to people and are being supported by neuroscience. And, um, you know, so, um, uh, so the, Dr. Yeo has also mentioned that uh, research has shown that if you have a wandering mind, you're not going to be a happy person. Uh, wandering mind is not a happy mind. Uh, because you go fall back to your default uh, mode network, um, which also always dwells in the past and future, and is always like negative. And the only way to get beyond this negative states of mind is to anchor the mind in the present moment. And what uh, Dr. Yo has done is to um, run through with us a very quick uh, practice on mindfulness, uh, that is being aware of our body and then moving on to the breath and then coming back to the body. And when we talk about mindfulness, we talk about attention, attention to the body. Uh, mind is a bit uh, difficult, but that also comes as we develop our practice uh, further. And uh, the attention must also come with attitude, which is the kindness and curiosity. So uh, these are some very useful techniques and it has also mentioned how we should try to practice it at least three minutes a day. If you can uh, make, make that to happen in your life, you will see some beneficial effects. Now, if I might ask the first question, and obviously the, the audience are listening to you uh, to the talk, can you please type in your questions on the Facebook and then we will run your questions down here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the first question is, thank you for your sharing. Do you conduct workshop for beginners in Penang Island? Uh, so this is <laughs> from Penang. <laughs> uh, so very we, good uh, uh, question. Yeah. I do conduct a uh, public course, okay, public course uh, from time to time and also give a public workshop, okay. And then after that, if you are interested, after you have attended the training, you know, you are welcome to join uh, as a member in the Malaysia Mindfulness Association, okay. And we do have a monthly gathering or monthly revision class. But that is only open for those who have already uh, attended the the workshop or at least half a day workshop because we cannot always uh, recruit new member if not every time we have to repeat the same thing again and again so at this moment i do not offer any uh, so course at this moment because of covid 19 but you can always follow us on our facebook if there is any future course uh, you may get the information from there 
Okay. Yeah, maybe the, you may ask the yeah, question as well. Carlos, <laughs> let me ask a question. All right. Now we know about the MBSR, which is mindfulness-based stress reduction. How could mindfulness itself be used uh, for a person to cope with stress and with a sense of crisis? Because uh, you started off with the talk by talking about the pandemic. This pandemic has uh, very negative uh, implications on the economy and also on people. You know, people losing their jobs and uh, seeing the business fail because you don't have income coming in for months upon months. How can mindfulness, in what way can mindfulness help a person to be able to tackle stress and to be able to handle crisis like a pandemic of uh, COVID-19? Okay, a very good question uh, by Dr. Sri. Uh, let me share a little bit of background of MBSR program. Okay, MBSR was first developed by uh, John Kabak Zing, you know, for the purpose of like helping the patient to cope with chronic pain. Okay, a lot of patients they suffer from physical pain. Of course, when we suffer from physical pain, when we have health issue, the the body is not alone. You always come with stress always come with emotion isn't it so the first step is always uh, to develop the ability to come back to the present moment the reason why is if we do not have the ability to come back to the present moment our mind is always wonders to the future to the past or futures and this is the one of the main source of stress when we say we are very stressful then you start to think what will happen in futures if I do not do well, if I lost my job, isn't it? You can see that. So the first step is always that have an anchor for our mind to return or to come back. That will help us to develop what we call the stability of mind. That is only the first step. After that, when, when emotions start to arise, and that will be how to pay attention to our emotion. The modern scientists also show us emotions actually express themselves in our body, which means emotions are physiological experience. Okay? There is a part in our brain called the amygdala. amygdala okay? The amygdala will be uh, activated, especially when we are under stress. So it will start to uh, produce some hormones like a stress hormone, cortisol, adrenaline and so on okay so it will we will feel the emotion like the physical changes in our body heart beats become faster breathing rate become faster the whole body become very hot this is like when you are getting angry so when you are sad or when you are in an anxiety state that will be a different feelings but all of this emotion and feeling we can feel it in our body okay and then as we said this will be very unpleasant sensation or unpleasant experience. Then it will come to the next, which is like how to pay attention to this. Is it how to pay attention to it? I mean, in mindfulness, what we do is we feel the feeling. Okay, we feel the unpleasantness in our body. But to be able to do that, that is not easy because our mind is always very reactive. We always reject. We always want to run away from these feelings and this emotion, isn't it? So therefore, there is very important aspect of mindfulness is on developing what we call the right attitude. Okay, this is like purposely, we have to develop this type of right attitude, which means that when we, are, when we are aware that the mind becomes reactive, rejective, or try to run away, and we pay attention to this emotional reaction disliking, you know, fear and so on. Uh, this requires a lot of training. Okay, therefore, as I said, that is a very important part of mindfulness on how to pay attention to our emotions. So when we are able to pay attention uh, to this emotion in this way, and we also understand why does this emotion uh, arises? Of course, there are reasons for that. There are conditions for that. Okay, so for example, for example, if tomorrow I need to give a very, very important presentation to maybe thousands of people, do you think that tonight I can sleep well? Definitely I cannot sleep well because the conditions are there. But in mindfulness, what we do is we develop a type of what we call the right mindset. 
in Buddhist way, we will call it a right view. Okay, right? to understand that the emotions arise because there are certain conditions for them to arise. We develop this type of right understanding or right view so that we do not run away from the emotions. We just take the emotion as a natural state of mind or as a result of the uh, conditioned phenomena. Okay, so that the mind will be more willing to work with this emotion in that way. Okay, so that is how uh, mindfulness will help us to manage the stress and emotion. When we are able to pay attention to the stress or emotion in this way, we can say that we change, we start to change our perspective of, on looking at things, looking at our emotions and feelings. This emotion and feeling that arises because they are the right condition for them to arise. Okay, so there are nothing much we can do. What we can do is we acknowledge them, okay, and then slowly we allow them and then we accept them. Therefore, in mindfulness, I always say this three, three A, acknowledge, allow, and accept. When we are able to pay attention to our emotions and feeling in that way, you see that our mind start to become less reactive. Okay, we are taking a, we can, we say that we we respond to it in a different way. We respond to it with kindness, or you can say respond to it with love. So this is the first step of developing self kindness and self love. So when we train ourselves in mindfulness, beside like we have the ability to return to the present moment. Second is we start to change on how we relate to stress and emotion. That is by purposely cultivating what we call a wholesome state of mind, which is kindness and curiosity in a simple way. Okay, I hope I answer your question. Well, that, is, that is very well put, I would say. So for those uh, who are, uh, this is just very quickly what Dr. Yu was saying, that if you have met with some kind of a crisis and stress, normally these thoughts becomes completely take over us. They, they pull us away and carry us away. And the more we begin to think about it, the more upset and stressed we become until we completely lose control. So in the practice of mindfulness, what we need to do is to pull back and bring the mind to the present moment. Because as long as your mind is anchored in the present moment, you are no longer dictated by the past or future, which is very troublesome. And after that, you begin to go back to your body because the emotions are expressed in your body through various body sensations. Just by watching your body, you are actually becoming coming back into some kind of control. And then later on, you begin to realize that the thoughts and emotions arises because of conditions. They are not you. Thoughts arises because of certain conditions. And you begin to watch thoughts rise and fall. And you acknowledge the thoughts, you allow them, and you accept them. And there's a sense of openness and allowance. And that the, instead of fighting against the emotions, when you begin to allow the emotions, then you begin to realize that you have much better control over these negative emotions, taking charge of yourself instead of being carried away by the stress. So uh, that is, uh, in short, what Dr. Yo is actually talking about. Now, we've got a Very question. Very good wrap up, yeah. Yeah, that's a question. What is the difference between mindfulness in the secular setting and the mindfulness that is taught by the Buddha in terms of the ultimate goal, and this is in terms of looking at the techniques of the body scan and equanimity. Yeah. Is there a okay. difference between the mindfulness that you practice for uh, like what we're talking about compared to the mindfulness that we use uh, as part of our spiritual cultivation within the Buddhist tradition? Okay, very good question. In fact, uh, this is a very good question uh, because I did uh, so-called received the training from both sides. I started with the what we call mindfulness from uh, Buddhism. I call it a classical mindfulness or traditional mindfulness. Attended many retreats and listen, learned from monks. Okay, and then and then slowly uh, I went to the West and learned the contemporary mindfulness. I think I'm in the position to share some thoughts on this. Huh? Uh, of course, there are a lot of similarities and there are differences as well. First, the goal is different. The final goal in uh, traditional mindfulness is always to attain liberation. I mean, liberation from the suffering. That will be the highest and the finest goal. But the Buddha also do not deny 
the benefits that that can be brought by mindfulness you know or sometimes the buddha always use the word mindfulness and clear comprehension sati and sampajanya okay so when we develop sati and sampajanya which is when we develop mindfulness and clear awareness in our daily life we can also feel the benefit immediately in this very life or in in, in our present life so the buddha actually do not deny there are a range of benefits from the highest or from the most basic to the highest one so i would say for contemporary mindfulness okay so when uh, when we said you know to achieve a calm state of mind uh, to even develop um, deeper understanding in uh, mind and body in this way they are the same they are overlapping but of course the contemporary mindfulness do not have the what we call liberation as the final goal mainly contemporary mindfulness was used to solve uh, what we call immediate issue like stress emotion emotions and how to be more focused how to uh, improve your performance leadership and so on okay but i don't think there is any uh, contradiction in this way because if you practice uh, from the buddhist tradition you may also feel the same benefits okay this is in terms of the goals they are different the second differences will be in term of the setting okay so in the buddhist when you want to learn uh, buddhist mindfulness normally what you can do is go to retreat center or meditation class so uh, that will be the setting will be different maybe sitting hour will be longer so as you can see the technique i share with you just now a uh, relatively they are shorter okay and they are more so called technique based and uh, in term of the language use is also very different okay so if you are aware i just now i what we use are just layman term okay layman english we do not have very you know technical terms uh, so when you learn from the buddhist tradition the way they are teaching may be slightly different okay the, the, the teachers may share with you you know you think the noble eight four path uh, which is very good as well but some people if you are not a buddhist so that will not be uh, friendly to them so called either you know? if you are christian or you are muslim you might not be able to learn uh, so called uh, mindfulness in that way so they are pro and con okay in terms of the one of the major different in uh, buddhist mindfulness mindfulness do not stand alone mindfulness always come together with the other noble path factors so when we're talking about mindfulness mindfulness is universal as i pointed out just now because mindfulness is just the ability to remember or to recall and to pay attention to the present moment this is universal uh, mind function the buddha or the buddhism do not own mindfulness this is for sure because as we discuss this now mindfulness is this uh, in term of a general uh, mindfulness uh, is this the ability to pay attention to the present moment even before the buddha time you know the the the, the teachers uh, where the buddha went to learn from them to achieve very high state of what we call concentration the jhana state these are all mindfulness without mindfulness you you will not be able to develop samadhi or the focus or attention uh, what we call stability of mind what is unique about buddhist mindfulness is what we call the right view okay right view eh? well, then we have to talk about the three characteristic okay not uh, dukkha uh, anicca and anatta impermanence not self not self actually mean not uh, is beyond your control not in full control in fact eh, when we say not self there will be thing arises because of cause and effect just now even without using the buddhist term i already trying to introduce some what we call right understanding to understand that the emotions actually arises due to conditions you no know, cause and condition so it, it really depends how deep uh what we call the experience or the knowledge that the the mindfulness teacher have if you have a uh, better knowledge he can also share mindfulness a uh, so called contemporary mindfulness uh by bringing in so called the wisdom the buddha wisdom you know so that we can actually work with the emotion in a better way 
So that is also one of the different. In terms of the technique, in terms of technique, of course we say we are using the body scan technique. Actually, the body scan technique also borrow from the Goenka method. Okay, <laughs> the Goenka method is they start to use the body scan. So there are similarity as well. I hope I I do answer your question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is this is a very good question. It can be very complex as well. But if you were to do mindfulness, whether you're doing it for spiritual cultivation or whether you, you are doing contemporary uh, mindfulness, it will always bring benefits to us. And it is this benefits that give us motivation to strive on. And if you really want to sharpen and want to develop your mindfulness to a much greater level, then maybe you should also have a look at within the Buddhist tradition, they have what we call the Maha Sati Patana Sutta, the foundation of mindfulness that talks about you know, that four foundations of mindfulness. And for that, uh, it is good for you to read. If you really want to go deeper, then you have to go under retreat conditions and all that. That's what uh, that's what Dr. Yu is talking about. So this contemporary, take it easy, uh, but you can see the benefits immediately. It is good for handling stress. And there's also another thing as well. It is also good for developing positive emotions, like developing yeah. empathy and self-confidence and leadership and also emotional intelligence. So both dealing with negative emotions as well as developing positive emotions. Yes. So I think we only have time for just one more question. We had, uh, time is almost like running out. Is there any question? Okay, last question, I think. Maybe uh, yeah. Dr. Sri, you would like to read up? All right. When we are feeling down or bad, how does becoming mindful about the negative emotion at the present moment helps yeah that is a also a very good question sometimes when we are experiencing certain negative emotion or physical pain so when we pay attention to the present moment the feelings okay or the pain become exaggerate okay become more okay be more difficult to cope with isn't it therefore as i said very important you know to develop that type of right attitude and also to be very flexible and to know your own limitation is not to say that we can solve every challenges or every issue with mindfulness. If your mental stability or your mindfulness is not uh, strong enough, which means do not well establish, that will be not easy to work with, with the negative emotion. Okay. So therefore, sometimes we need to work with a very good uh, experienced teachers and mindfulness as a therapy uh, is not recommended to everyone. Okay. If you suffer from severe depression. Okay. So mindfulness may not be good for you at that time being because the time with strong emotions and a lot of negative thoughts. So when you pay attention to it and you cannot distinguish the thoughts and also cannot distance yourself from the feeling and emotion, many times, you know, you will just follow the emotion or follow your thoughts by blindly. Okay. So that time mindfulness may not be very useful for you. So it really depends on condition as well. Okay. But when you are experienced or when you are well learned in mindfulness, then uh, working with bad emotions and negative emotions is not that difficult. I would say for my own personal experience, uh, just very short sharing you know, before we end. Uh, the, the reason why I started to learn mindfulness because I suffer from insomnia, sleeping issue and also anxiety yeah, back to 20 years ago. That is my motivation. I have to learn a way how to work with this mental state, my emotion. That so-called uh, motivated me to start to learn a technique or a skill to how to work with my emotion. But I have to admit, I uh, have to be very honest, the journey was not easy. Okay, the, it, it, you have to face with a lot of uh, up and down and you have to truly learn from that. Therefore, uh, from a certain uh, way, we can say that mindfulness is a skill. Okay, it's a technique that develops over time. You cannot expect yourself to be able to play a song on, on the piano when you first uh, you know, just attend the piano class for the first lesson. You take oh, take time to develop that skill. So mindfulness, you know, also is a skill that has to be developed over time. And then you start to learn a way on how to work with your emotions. Yeah. 
All right, so, so, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yoka King, for giving us an excellent talk tonight. I think, uh, you know, many um, the listeners was finally find it very beneficial because sometimes when we listen to talks uh, from members of the Sangha, it tends to be more like liberation, liberation. And the, the, uh, the line of argument is always in that direction. It is also good to see how, as lay people, that we can actually benefit from a simple technique called mindfulness. And as Dr. Yo says, the lattice, although mindfulness is really emphasized as one of the central um, skills that we should develop uh, and uh, encouraged by the Buddha, we, we Buddhists do not own mindfulness. Mindfulness could actually be practiced by people. It is universal in character, and the benefits are also universal. And because of that universality, it cuts across ethnic um, lines and religious lines, and you know anybody who wants to uh, give, you want to try mindfulness, you will be able to gain benefit from it. You know, so it is good. And uh, mindfulness doesn't mean that you need to sit cross-legged all the time on a chair. Uh, I think, Doctor, you also did mention that how. You know, you can apply mindfulness even in your daily activities, even as easy as uh, getting up from your bed, going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth, just paying attention to the fact that you're brushing your teeth. That is a mindfulness. And also in your daily activities, uh, you know, so uh, that is how we can actually apply mindfulness. And um, so a very, very good talk that we have this evening. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yoka. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, of DJ for presenting to us such an excellent talk. And those who want uh, would be able to kind of uh, follow up. Well, BJF was, uh, was um, we had a good opportunity of being the first recipient of uh, when uh, Dr. Yo had come back with his SRY training. He had to uh, give some kind of service to an NGO and he needed to clock in some credit hours. And BJF happens to be the organization in which he ran the first SIY program, you know, which uh, which I, I also attended <laughs> before in the very year. So, so, so thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I could see that uh, there is a lot of interest in this topic. Um, now, let me just go move on to another ish, uh, area, if I could, I could, I could say. Uh, you know, um, during this uh, pandemic time, uh, our centers are, are, we have a nice center at uh, Ara Damansara, but it, it has to be closed uh, because of the protocols that we have. And as you know, when centers are closed, um, when people don't come to the center, when you don't run activities in the center, I must actually say that uh, the contribution, the donations that we we have to depend on to run because we are not a commercial entity. We are, you know, we are an NGO. Uh, the donations has actually been uh, really down, uh, you know, and just looking at the projections of uh, uh, income and expenditure. That's going to be a very large deficit that we'll be facing this uh, this year. So I hope that um, you know, if you feel uh, that BJF is doing uh, a good job in helping to spread the Buddhist teachings and keeping you know uh, running activities for the benefit of the community, maybe you might want to consider to give some uh, donations to BJF. And uh, the way we're going to do it is that there are uh, essentially uh, four ways that you can uh, make your contribution to uh, 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 Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. so, so um, there, are, there are four ways, four ways that, that, um, um, that you can, that you can contribute. contribute. The option, option. Uh, is by uh, doing now, now or online banking, banking or pay, pay your, your bank, bank uh, uh, account, uh, account holder. Account holder. Account holder. Account holder. Next slide, Next please. Slide, please. Yes, the yes. The for is, is one. If you happen, if you happen to have an email, there is there is this uh, uh, QR code that you can, and, and, and then you then you can pay, pay, pay you can scan to make the contribution contributions. contributions to yeah. The second the option, option is uh, second uh, option. Second option is right now. now. This is this uh, you is, uh, you like to it now on your banking app. You key in the bank number on the app, and it is given is given as a PPM in the amount, amount and your, your transaction. Option create, it will be under the under you've got you've got the wallet. You touch the touch the scan and proceed with the payment. Option four. Option four. Uh, will be will be you know you know you have you have account account 
Okay, so, okay, so um, the way we would do it, we do it is that we would uh, make, make contributions. Contribution. Yeah, yeah. 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 Next, yeah. next yeah. 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 the name, the name of contributions as an acknowledge, knowledge contributions. And also to give to give information as well. This is the way of the way of this tradition. Tradition we have. Thank you. 